Let's talk money. Welcome back. You're with us on Let's Talk Money. And this week, we are talking passive funds and how you should mix them in your mutual fund portfolio. Ashish Shankar of Motilal Osal Private Wealth is answering all of those questions that you have. And the next one is a really interesting query. And it, it's, you know, it's, I, I must be honest, even I've thought of it, Ashish. It's coming in from Pankaj. Let me quickly pull it up. Uh, he's written in on our Instagram pages. Mm -hmm. He is saying, um, uh, if index funds are a good option while investing even in mid and small caps. Mm -hmm. Coming to the latter part, you said large caps, it's fine. You know, yes. you, can, you can look at index funds. Yes. But we have so many passive products right. that simply mirror the mid cap index or the small cap index. Right. So, and especially last year, we had a 40% rise in the mid cap Absolutely. index. So is it worth a thought? Look, um, the index fund category is growing, mm. right? You have all kinds of variety, mm. mid, small, micro. Uh, I call this the dal roti investing, right? <laughs> so if you do not understand and you yeah. want a participation in the mid and small cap, index funds are great. Mm. But if you can, you know, p apply a little more mind and work with somebody who understands this space mm. and, you know, get a active fund in the mid and small cap category, the differential in return can be quite a bit. Okay. I mean, we've done that study as to what is the difference between the top performing fund and the index and the bottom performing fund. So dispersion is... numbers, because that's really interesting, yeah, that dispersion. dispersion is, uh, I think it's about 17 to 20% more. And if you actually do the compounding mats, it can be a very, very large number. Hmm. Uh, so there is, uh, you know, enough incentive and uh, reason hmm. to try and select a good active manager in the mid and small cap. Plus, the other reason why you can select an active guy in the mid and small cap category is because there is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, thought that one needs to put in into the quality of companies. Because as you go down the cap curve, yeah. the quality of a lot of those companies uh, diminish. Yeah. So, that's the reason I remember, why. I think this was sometime last year or last last year, when the first uh, passive product popped up in my inbox on the small cap index, I was like, this can't be real. Like, just a small cap index mirroring product. But yes, Absolutely. you have them. But as Ashish is saying, that is your, you know, roti dal chawal way of investing in mid caps and small caps. If you want to be a little evolved, then you should be looking at actively managed funds in this basket. Okay, very quickly to the last question. Let's squeeze this in as well. This is an email that we've got from our uh, next viewer, Rajneesh. Mm -hmm. He is saying that he's currently investing 40,000 rupees mm -hmm. uh, a month for his nine-year-old uh, and he is doing this across Nifty 50, Nifty Next 50, and the Midcap 150 indices. So, you know, three different passive funds yes. on these three indices. Uh, and so far, he's already accumulated a corpus of 53 lakh rupees just by being in these index funds. He knows, uh, he wants to know how much of the corpus can he hope to collect for his son uh, in about 15 years from now and maybe 35 years from now. I don't know why he's put those milestones, but he right. wants to create a retirement corpus for his son. Right. Is this the right approach? So this is a fantastic question, mm -hmm. Surbhi, and this illustrates the power of compounding like uh, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just did some back of the envelope mats because okay. this requires a little, little mats. Yeah. Uh, compounding is not intuitive. So let's assume that, uh, you know, the money multiplies at 12%. I mean, mm -hmm. as wealth managers, we always like to be a bit conservative, conservative. Yes, yes. right? So by age 25, mm. the lump sum of 53 lakhs mm. will multiply to 3.24 crores. Okay. Right? The SIP okay. amount of 40,000 per month will go to 2.32 crores. So which means the total corpus by the age of 25, mm. this kid will have 5.66 crores, which is a neat sum of money. Now, if it uh, compounds at 15% per annum, which is what we talk about when we talk about equities, mm. right? By age 25, he will have almost close to 8 crores. Eight crores. Eight crores. And this is just being in plain vanilla... Plain vanilla index, index funds. funds. Not Absolutely. even in a very well-run active fund. Absolutely. Now, let's take the second uh, query, which is by 45 years, how much will the money compound to? At 12%, the total amount of corpus this kid is going to have is 60 crores. Okay? <laughs> I want to be the kid. Yeah. It's a little too late. And but now, yeah. <laughs> let's do it at 15%. Oh. Okay? The lump sum amount alone, mm. the 53 lakhs, mm. will become 81 crores. Okay? Oof. The SIP amount will become 69 crores. You know what that <laughs> totals up to? Hold your breath. It'll be 150 crores. That's more than a enough for retirement, I would absolutely say. Absolutely. <laughs> simple SIP of 40,000 rupees per month, uh -huh. compounding at 15%, uh -huh. and a lump sum that he's accumulated of 53 lakhs. Yeah. I think what he's doing is great. He doesn't need our advice. <laughs> he should continue doing what he's doing and he's on the right 
track because he has so much clarity mm. and he has given his kid a runway of so many years. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell all our viewers mm. that everybody should think of equities in this manner because it's all about compounding and long term yeah. compounding is very powerful and not yeah. intuitive. I mean, I even I had to do the numbers. No, that's fantastic. And I think that's, that's why I completely take your point and it's a point well made that if you can't do too much of research and fund selection, then at least be in a passive fund and just ride that compounding Absolutely. wave to ensure that you have, you know, Absolutely. a sizable corpus as you go forward. It's been fantastic, Ashish. Uh, you know, quite an eye-opener as well as those numbers say. Right. But, you know, on the show, uh, beyond the theme that we discussed, we also have this concept of a money minute. That's right. It could be any tip on personal finance that you'd like to share with our viewers. So, what will yeah, so it So, I get this question a lot these days, large cap versus mid cap versus small caps and valuations of markets. Uh, our view is that large caps are still reasonably valued and uh, to an extent uh, cheap when I consider future earnings. So we are advising people to invest in large caps in a lump sum manner. Mid and small cap part of the market has obviously run up, but for the right reason, the profits have also run up. But we believe from here on, it is better to stagger your money into mid and small caps. Mm -hmm. But the runway for growth still looks very solid for the next three to five years. So keep the faith, be invested. It's mm -hmm. important to be invested rather than trying to think overthink valuations, markets, mid, small, large. Okay, and as we're signing out, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, you know, at Motila Loswal Private Wealth, the model portfolio, so to speak, that you would have at 2024, uh, looking at what markets are doing right now. So what is the advice? How much equity, how much fixed income, exposure to gold, which you traditionally liked in the last couple of years? So what's the overall ratio? Right. So in fact, ratio? Uh, you know, we release our uh, annual note in January. Yeah. Yeah. And the title of that note was Year of the All-Rounder, mm -hmm. which basically means whatever allocation you have fixed for yourself from a longer run point of view. Let's say you're 50 equity, 50, 40 debt and 10 gold. Mm -hmm. You should stick to that, not go overboard in any asset class mm -hmm. because all asset classes are look, looking reasonably attractive uh -huh. after a long time. Gold is looking good, fixed income is looking fine and, and equity is obviously the runway for growth is pretty, pretty decent. So mm -hmm. it's the year of the all-rounder, mm -hmm. having a bit of everything is uh -huh. the right approach for this calendar year. That's superb and that's a great optimistic note to end on the year of the all-rounder. Uh, leaving me uh, feeling better. And uh, let's see if we can have uh, more of that reflect in our portfolios as well. Great. Thank I've you. enjoyed being here. Thank you so much for uh, joining in and answering all the questions. We hope to have you more often in our studios for this. Well, viewers, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Let's Talk Money. But remember, we are waiting to hear from you because this show is all about what you want to know. So keep sending those questions and queries on AskCNBCTV18 at NW18.com. You can, of course, also DM us on all of our social media handles and my handle as well. See you again next week. Let's talk money.